Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I'm going to be filming um, the process of sewing another dress. This one's going to be in my little spring slash summer collection that will be coming out soon. So I thought I would make one with you. I finished the pattern yesterday, so I'm probably not going to show you too much of the pattern, but I'll show you the shapes before I cut the fabric out. So hopefully if any of you want to recreate it, you can kind of look at the shape of the pattern and do some guesswork from there. I have been slacking with the videos recently and I'm sorry for that, but I have been just in this studio bashing out loads of dresses for my next collection, so that's where I've been. And also just lockdown has really got to me this time. My energy levels are very low. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and find it helpful and fingers crossed the dress turns out well. <laughs> so I've got all the pattern pieces here and the pattern pieces from a dress I was making previously. Um, so that's why there's so many bits of paper there. And this is the dress I'm going to work on today. So it's pretty basic silhouette. And then fabric wise, I have three different fabrics I could make this in. This one I found on Etsy recently and it's a vintage Jane Churchill fabric printed in 1987. <laughs> so I'm kind of being really precious about this fabric because it wasn't that expensive but it's just I love it so much the colours in it are just beautiful. So I'm so I don't know if I want to sort of save this for an upholstery project when I move house or something if I ever move house. <laughs> so yeah I may have to just keep hold of that like that for now. And then this is probably the fabric I'll use today. Um, all of these are a light upholstery fabric, so they're cotton upholstery fabric and they're not super heavy. This one's not. This one's probably the heaviest out of all of them. Um, and I like to use the wrong side of the fabric because the right side is often really garish and very sort of chintz looking, which isn't my vibe completely. <laughs> so it still has that sort of chintz 80s floral but just died down once it's on the reverse so that's what I'm going to use today um, and then I've had this one for ages um, I got this at a flea market this one I also got on Etsy second hand obviously not sure what the name of this one is but if you wanted to pause it <laughs> and try and find it online maybe um, if you just type in chintz light upholstery fabric you'll probably find something along the lines of these so the first step is going to be cutting out all of the pattern pieces so I'm going to get on with that now and I will show you them laid out when I'm cutting up the fabric. <laughs> So the first piece I'm cutting out is the tiered skirt and the way you cut out your fabric is always so important especially with a floral like this because it kind of looks like it can go any which way but it really should go that way by the looks of it so I'm going to keep that in mind when I'm cutting everything out. <laughs> Now I'm cutting out the back skirt which has a dart at the top and this is the centre back. These are just being flipped so that's why you can't see this seam allowance and any of the other things. This is one of the front panels at the side. This is the side back panel and then the back facing. Um, so I'm just going to cut those out quickly. And then I'll move on to the pattern pieces that only need one cutting out or that I need to cut on the fold. So this is my sleeve pattern and I have it cut on the fold just to save pattern paper really. Um, so that just means you cut it on the fold of the fabric. So I've only done that for the sleeve and the front facing. So the next two pieces are 
quite important to line up with the fabric um, or just be aware of the part of the fabric you want right at the front um, because this is the front bodice piece so I quite like this little floral bit here with a mixture of the blue and the pinks so I'm just going to place it around some places and see what I think looks nicest and then this is the central sort of waistband and I'll probably place it close to where I put the front one just so it sort of seems like it's symmetrical there we go I've got the front pinned down under there I went for some quite pink flowers in the end so that the dress doesn't look too greeny blue and then I just placed the middle bit right underneath when you have a larger pattern like this it can waste fabric quite easily um, placing something exactly where you want it but it is definitely worth it I've pinned the final pattern piece in and I've also been wary of the pattern underneath this um, because this is the front skirt piece so it's again important that there's no weird parts in an awkward area <laughs> I'm going to cut that out and then we can start sewing so now that I've cut all the pieces out I'm going to work on the ones that have darts first just so they're out of the way so yeah I don't usually like doing darts in my sewing to be honest that much but when it's a tight fitting dress they kind of have to be there <laughs> so my darts are already in the pattern on the paper and all you need is the two top notches and the bottom point and then I just like to take a little needle and put it in the point that you're going to sew to and then on the reverse side of the fabric so for me that's actually the good side of the fabric I take a pencil and I just mark where that end of the dart is going to be and then at the top I've cut in notches so I just put those bits of fabric together and sew down to the mark I've just sewn facing together and I wanted to put my label in because I always forget to do this and that's just going to sit there and I might as well stitch in now and I like to do a zigzag stitch down each side. I used to hand stitch these in but I actually prefer the way it looks with the zigzag stitch on each end so yeah that's what I'm going to do now. And there we go that's my label stitched in there now so yeah that will just sit inside at the back and then this goes round like that and finishes off the neckline inside so i have the front and the back pieces laid out for you now so you can kind of see how i've done the pattern for the front i didn't want to put loads of darts in the front so i've just turned it into one big seam um, because the darts would have been like up here and there and I just think fewer darts look less messy and then this is what the back looks like um, so I'll only be attaching them like this and then the zip will go down the middle at the back I don't usually do a centre back zip actually to be honest I usually do a side zip but I thought it would look a bit neater with this style dress and also because it's quite fitted it will make it a lot easier to get into um, may just need someone to do up the back but yeah much easier than the side zip so I'm going to go and sew all of those pieces together and then I'll show you what they look like once they've been sewn together the front and the back pieces sewn together and now I'm going to attach them just at the shoulder for now. I invested in a new sewing machine foot recently and it's quite a scary looking foot. It's called the ultimate ruffler foot and I'll show it to you in a second but it's just crazy like it creates perfect ruffles 
Um, and I also bought a gathering foot, which is just a bit smaller, well, a lot smaller, it's just like the size of a normal foot. I've just cut out some strips and folded them in half and overlocked them. And I'm going to ruffle it first and see what it looks like. I, I had it ruffled on the toile, but I might try it gathered as well, if I have enough left of this strip, just to give it a go. So this is what a normal foot looks like. And this mega chunky foot is my new sewing machine foot. <laughs> and it's got different gauges on it, so it the one I have it on at the moment, it does a pleat every six um, stitches. And you've kind of got to play around with the stitch length and everything like that to get it perfect. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. But once it's in the right setting, and it's on a slow speed, you have to go really slowly with this, then it's just like magic. <laughs> you basically just feed it through this part here, and then put the foot down. You've got to make sure the needle is going through the middle, because if it doesn't, then you are a bit stuffed. And then I think last time I put it down a few stitches, so I'm going to try it on stitch length two. So that's it's very noisy. <laughs> okay, so that's the ruffle size. I think I'm going to go down a stitch length to 1.8 and see how that goes. really surprised it's sewing this because it's such a thick fabric um, so that's great news I'm just gonna keep going and it's just gonna ruffle as much as I need you. and then this is what a gathering foot looks like and I'm gonna do a little sample to see what it looks like with this trimming in case it looks better than the ruffle this one I didn't buy the expensive version of, so it's a bit dodgy fitting on my machine. I think this was about £3, and the other one was about £50. So you do get what you pay for. Um, obviously they're different, they do different jobs, but this one you have to kind of like hook over the back somehow. There we go. It's just really hard to get off from what I remember. So I'm going to give gathering a little go and see what it looks like. You have, to you have to turn the tension up pretty much to the highest it can go. And then we'll see what it does, see if it does anything. I'm gonna turn the stitch length up a lot. I have a feeling the fabric's probably too thick to gather it, so. I try. It has gathered it. It's just such a different gather. Um, I'm not sure if I prefer that or not. But I'm going to keep going and do some, do some more, and then we can decide. So here we have the two different trims for the neckline. So this is the ruffled one, and this is the gathered one. And I really thought I was going to want to have it ruffled because that's what I did on my toile. But I actually think I prefer the way the fabric looks with gathers. So that's just going to go on my neckline and sort of stand up as a little collar. So I'm going to pin that down now. So I'm just going to pin it like this around there and then I'll stitch it down and I will stitch the facing on top of that. And then easy peasy you have a cute little neckline. So that's how the neckline is looking. I'm so happy with it. It looks so neat and clean. And then this is the back so I just sort of bring it down into the neckline just to finish it off. Yeah, super happy with that. So I've still left the sides open because I'm going to sew the sleeves in here and then I sew the sleeve and this together before I do anything else. So let's work on the sleeve next. So I've already ironed up about 
six or seven centimeters and overlocked the top bit here and I'm going to stitch a channel seam just going along here that I can fit elastic into and this is what the sleeve looks like on my toile um, I did edit it a tiny bit so I took it up here under the arm so that you don't get loads of bulk down there it's gonna look super cute I'm so excited so I've now sewn the channel seam in here and then I'm going to measure out I think I used 10 inches on the twelve, so I'm going to use that again, it worked quite well. 10 inches of 6mm elastic, so I'm just going to drop that there. And then this tool is honestly one of the best life-saving things you will ever get. It's basically used instead of having to thread a safety pin all the way through your channel seam. So you fit the elastic in there but sometimes I take it out and put it in when it's nearly gone through and you just thread this through the sleeve in the channel seam until this starts to get close to the end. Some of this I have to use my mouth for um, so that I don't lose the end so I tend to put this end in my mouth and hold on to it so it doesn't disappear and then I just thread it through Don't take me now. and then I make sure I hold on to these two ends very tightly and sew them straight down. Just do a few back stitches on each side and then it holds it into place. So that's what that looks like sewn down and then I'm going to do some parallel gathering stitches along the top so a really wide stitch and gather that in and I'll show you what that looks like. So I've done a double stitch along the top of the sleeve and then you just pull the two bits of thread on top and slowly move the fabric so that it gathers it all up. You don't need to gather the whole way, you just start from about, I don't know, a quarter of the way in maybe? And there you have it, the cutest little sleeve. I am so obsessed with these. I think they're so cute. So yeah, I'm going to go and sew the other sleeve now and then we can attach them to the bodice. I've just attached one of the sleeves to the armhole. So this is like the super easy way of inserting a sleeve. So you have the armhole here and then you have your sleeve and you basically just reverse it and I like to pin to the edges first both edges and then I will find my centre notch which is somewhere in here. So I make a little notch in the centre of the sleeve and I find that and match it up to the top of the shoulder on the bodice and then I just start working my way around pinning it into place and this is just such an easy way of getting your sleeve in your armhole. And then you're just going to sew all the way around here and your sleeve is in. Both sleeves are in. Now I need to stitch the sides together. So I'm gonna go and do that. So we've now got the bodice and the sleeves are all sewn together. And I've just sewn the front and back skirt panels together and I'm going to attach that to the waistband and then I will need to do the back zip going all the way down. So when I fall behind, just give me I've just sewn the bottom part of the skirt together so it's in one big circle and I've done a double row stitch of gathering at the top and so I'm just going to find the ends and start gathering. I managed to get the zip in this evening so that's good and I just need to attach the bottom skirt to the dress now and then it will be done. It's actually a really soft fabric as well it feels really nice on the skin. Morning guys, so today I'm finishing off the dress. 
I've just got the bottom tier of the skirt to attach and then we're done. So I've already started pinning the bottom tier of the skirt a little bit. So I'm gonna get on and pin the rest of this and sew it and then I can try it on with you guys. I also have to parcel up in another dress today to send off to a photographer. Going to be part of something very exciting which I don't even know if I can talk about yet. But if you're following me on my design account, then I will let you know when that goes up. I'm hoping to get all of the dresses ready for the same time to go up. So they'll be ready around the 1st of May. Yeah, I think that's when they'll hopefully be going up. Yeah, I have quite a few of these dresses. I've been a little machine the last two weeks making these. And it's just in the most beautiful cotton floral fabric so I'm really excited for you guys to see that one I think you're gonna really like it I'll give you a little sneak peek of what it looks like I have quite a few of them hanging up right now um, so this is the neckline and it's got big puffy sleeves as always um, with some really cute little elastic in them and they come with a belt that can cinch them in so yeah, I'm very excited about these. Those dresses come in one size, but it fits size eight to 14. So I really love making dresses like that because they're just so easy and comfortable. Anyone can wear them. Uh, you don't have to worry about what size you are unless you're 16 plus, which one day hopefully I will cater for. Um, but for now, everything's still very small scale. I also had the most beautiful flowers arrive from the YSL Beauty team the other day. So yeah, I feel very spoiled for flowers at the moment because my sister has also keeps sending me bloom and wild <laughs> flowers from my Christmas present. So yes, I'm a very lucky girl. Flowers make me very happy. So yeah, the photographer is basically taking a flat lay image of the dress. So in like magazines, you see cut out images of dresses and things like that. So that's what he's going to do. And yeah, it's quite exciting. I've never had one of my garments taken like that. So we'll see how it goes. And there we go, the dress is now finished. I'm gonna go and pop it on and take a few photos in it and show you guys what it looks like. I love this fabric so much, it's so nice to work with and it just looks, I sent a picture to my friend and she said it looks like a painting <laughs> and it really does um, and I have enough of it to make another one. So that's good. Yeah, let me go and try this on. If you set yourself on fire, I never let you burn. I would smoke you till my lungs hurt and love you till I'm dead. Oh, oh, I'm not sure. I feel like I'm competing with the washing machine right now, but this is the finished dress. I just went out and took a few photos of it. And I'm super happy with how it turned out. Let me show you in a full length mirror. So here we go, this is what the dress looks like. The full length. And I'm so happy with how these sleeves turned out. I think they're so cute. So yeah, very, very happy with how this dress has turned out. I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching me make this dress. As always, I will leave the links to my normal Instagram and my design Instagram below and also my website because there's still some dresses up there and some patchwork quilted cushion covers actually because those went up a few weeks ago um, and I still have some of those left on my website if you wanted to check those out. And yeah, I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!